We discuss an awful lot about buying new gear. Most photography channels on YouTube, people are discussing new equipment that's coming out and should you buy it or not. But very rarely do we discuss selling gear. And this is arguably a just as important part when it comes to managing your photography equipment, because a lot of the time you're probably selling old equipment to raise money to buy the new equipment. So how best to sell your old gear? And this is actually a question that I have been asked several times recently, people wanting to know, how do I personally go about selling my gear? Now the short answer to that is that I generally favor using websites like eBay, although there are a lot of options out there, lots of different ways that you can sell your equipment. So in this video, we're going to look at several different ways that you can sell your old gear and the pros and cons to each. Now the first that we'll look at is selling your equipment to a retailer. In the same way that you can sell your old uh, phones, CDs, DVDs, laptops, pretty much anything electronic these days. There's websites where you can go on and you can get an instant online quote for how much they'd be prepared to pay you for it and then you ship your gear off to them. And some camera retailers run this same sort of thing. So you simply tell them online what the item is, what the condition is, they will give you a quote for it. If you want to accept that quote, they will generally organize shipping for you so you can send the item to them. They check it over as long as they're happy that the condition of your item matches what you said it was in the first place. They just transfer the money straight into your bank account. The pros to this really are the convenience. The fact that there's very little effort from your part. It's not like when you have to sell things privately, you have to make an advert, you potentially have to wait a a, a prolonged period of time for the right person to find that item and buy it, or you've got lots of people messaging you trying to kind of negotiate the price down and stuff. You don't have any of that with selling direct to a retailer. It's just a, a few clicks on a website. Within five minutes, it's done. You ship your item off, and within a day or two, you've got the money paid. The big negative to all this, however, is that you will never get paid what the item is really worth. And with fairly good reason, because the whole point of what the retailer's doing is they're taking the hassle out of having to sell it privately. They're doing all that for you and they want to sell that item. So if you've got something that's worth 500 pounds, they're not gonna pay you 500 pounds to then only sell it themselves for 500 pounds because they wouldn't be making any money. So the convenience of the quick sale comes at a cost. Now to put this into perspective as to how much potential loss you could be looking at here, I recently sold my Sony 70 to 200 mil F4 lens. Now I had that lens for about two years. I bought it secondhand in pretty much mint condition off eBay and I sold it a few weeks ago still in pretty much mint condition, and I sold it for 820 pounds, which is pretty good considering I only paid 800 for it in the first place. Now, I had a look at one retailer called MPB who purchase used gear and then sell it. Now they actually are advertising at the moment in the used section of their website, a Sony 70 to 200 mil F4 lens in excellent condition and they are trying to sell it for 740 pounds, 739. So actually slightly less than what I was able to get for it uh, secondhand, but then I don't know whether they class the version that I sold as excellent condition or like new, I don't know. But 740 pounds for what they deem as an excellent condition lens. Now I went on to their uh, get a quote section of their website and to sell them a excellent condition Sony 70 to 200 F4 lens, they were only prepared to pay 520 pounds, which they're making 220 pound profit from just selling that lens. And had I opted to sell my lens to them rather than through eBay, I'd have lost close to 300 pounds off what I ended up finally getting. Another way that you can sell to a retailer is rather than selling your item direct straight for cash in your account is to use a trading service. 
Now, essentially, this is still, you sell them your old gear and they will go on and sell it used if it's something that is sellable. But rather than them pay you money straight into your bank account, they essentially give you store credit to purchase new gear from them. The plus point to doing this over selling it directly to them is that generally they will give you more in-store credit value than they would pay you direct into your account. So using the Sony 70 to 200, for example, they'd pay 520 pounds in cash if you sold it direct to them. But for trading, maybe they'd offer you 620 pounds. So they might offer you an extra 100 pounds in store credit. Now, the reason why retailers will generally offer you more money for a trade-in is because that then ties you into purchasing new gear from them. So yes, they will make a profit of selling your old gear and they'll make less of a profit if they give you more in trade-in value. But by doing that, they've guaranteed a sale of new gear as well and they're going to make additional profit off that. Now, maybe you're wanting to purchase a brand new lens. Maybe you want to upgrade from the 70-200 f4 up to a 70-200 f2.8 G Master lens, for example. Now, maybe selling that G Master lens brand new, they might make £300 profit. In an ideal world, what they would probably absolutely love to happen is them buy your old uh, f4 lens for £520, turn it around and sell it for £740, £220 profit right there. You then turn around and buy the 2.8 from them and they make another £300 profit. They've then made f over £500 profit just from you alone. But there's no guarantee that after selling them your F4 lens that you then buy the 2.8 from them. You might find the 2.8 for sale from a different retailer for a little bit cheaper and you turn around and purchase it from them. Suddenly that retailer's now lost 300 pounds of potential profit. So if they offer you an extra 100 pound for your F4 lens at store credit, you're more inclined to buy the 2.8 from them. Yes, they won't make a full 520 pound profit, but they will guarantee themselves 420 pounds. So it's a bonus from their perspective. The negative, however, is exactly that from your perspective, is that you then tie yourself into having to purchase gear from that one particular retailer. And maybe that retailer isn't the cheapest option out there. So I would generally recommend if you are considering trading in old gear for new gear, it might be worth just having a little bit of a shop around and just working out is it the cheapest option to trade in with one particular retailer or is it financially better to sell to one retailer and buy from a different? Now, alternatively, you could just not sell to a retailer at all and sell privately. Now, as you could probably already establish by now, the pros and cons to selling privately, generally, you get more money for your old gear because you're selling direct to Joe Public, not having to go through a retailer but it is potentially a lot more hassle in having to you know make an advert and then wait for someone to to buy the item from you and to deal with all the correspondence that go back and forth and people wasting your time and messing you around so it, it's whether it's worth it or not now really there's two main ways that i think that you can sell stuff privately the first is to go through something like a social media group um, so either online photography forums or Facebook buy and sell groups, photography buy and sell groups. Now, these are great in the sense that they're generally free to use. You just post an advert up and you wait for someone to get in touch. The negatives, however, can be that there's not really much in the way of seller or buyer protections. The, like the site admins and stuff have absolutely no control over it. They can't really do anything. So Obviously, there are those are rare occasions, but you know you can get shady people, unfortunately, who will try and screw you because this is reality. Unfortunately, that's kind of where sites like eBay come in because they can act as a bit more of a moderator and they do have those powers to try and resolve these issues. Now, the obvious negative that people will say that overusing eBay versus selling through 
social media is the cost of it. So you might have to pay a fee to put the listing up in the first place. You then pay a selling fee to eBay that's usually a percentage of whatever the value of the item is. And then the payments are generally done through PayPal, which is an extra level of protection. But again, you then have to pay for using their service. So a bit more, so another percentage of the final selling fee gets cut to PayPal. So you can potentially end up with a sizable chunk of your final sale figure going to the websites just for handling everything for you. Now, what I generally do personally for this is why I, I use eBay is that I've found eBay quite often will have promotions of like whether the max selling fee is one pound or sometimes three pounds. So that means that the most that you will pay to eBay is like a pound per item. So you don't pay the, the percentage to eBay based off the, off the final sale. You still pay a, a percentage to PayPal to act as the moderator there, but you don't pay as much as you otherwise would have done. And even if you were selling through the likes of social media, most people these days generally want the payments going through PayPal anyway, just so they do have those protections. So generally now, if I've got stuff that I want to sell, I will wait until I get an email saying about the, the offers for the selling fees, and then I'll put everything on at once. Recently, I've done two or three bouts of selling old gear that's been several thousand pounds worth of gear that had I just done it at any normal time, probably would have cost me a couple hundred pounds in fees to eBay, and instead has probably cost me the sum total of about 15 quid. The only negative to that, however, is that you're then sitting around waiting for these offers to come up in the first place. And that could be a couple of weeks before you can even then start the auction and then another week until the auction ends and then you've got to wait for the payment. So if you're in a situation where you're after money fast, it's not necessarily the best way to go. But if you have the cash spare or you're not in that much of a rush to put your order in for whatever you're after, I've found for me personally, it's much more benefit financially to go through that. But obviously, like I said, there's many different ways of doing it and they are gonna depend on your personal circumstances. So what's your preferred method of selling your old gear? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below while you're down there. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. There's also a link to my Patreon account down there where you can get some exclusive behind the scenes content and prize giveaways as well. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.